Journey into Space. BBC presents Jet Morgan in Operation Luna. After taking off from the moon, Jet Morgan and the crew of rocket ship Luna landed back on the Earth some thousands of years before or after they left it. All efforts to determine at what period of time they'd landed were useless, for besides sighting other spaceships, which hovered overhead as though observing them, and seeing a strange machine which came out of the forest one night and returned before dawn, Jet had found a stone knife near their campfire. The evidence seemed to suggest that they had landed at a period of time when there existed on Earth not only a super-civilization, but also a very primitive one. And then, early one morning, the strange music which had been heard so often before was heard again. Jet turned on the televiewer to find that outside the ship, another spaceship had landed, identical with the one that Mitch had seen and entered on the moon. Jet decided to try and contact it by radio. Hey, out, Jet. Here's the helmets. Do we put them on now? Yes, put them on and turn them on, all of you. And then listen, see if you hear anything. Yeah, mine's on. Yes, so's mine. Jet, I can hear something. Yes. And it's getting louder. Hello, Luna. Blimey. That is... Quiet, Lemmy. But it was a voice. A human voice. And it came over the radio. It came from there. There's somebody, or something, in that ship. And whatever it is, it speaks English. Wouldn't it be rather awkward if I didn't? Well, yes, I suppose it would. Who are you? What do you want? We only want to help you. How? It is not safe for you to remain where you are. Well, it's a pity you didn't think of that before you planted us down here. Quiet, Lemmy. We don't know who you are or, or what you want of us. All we ask of you is to leave your own ship and enter ours. Enter yours? No harm will come to you. You needn't be afraid. We're not afraid, just cautious. You speak for yourself, mate. We can help you if you want us to, but you must do as I say. Are you anything to do with that ship we saw on the moon? Yes, we are. Then who are you? Leave your own ship and come in here. You come in here. Why don't you show yourself? We cannot show ourselves. Why not? Hey, are you invisible? No, but I am not in this ship. What? What are we going to do about this? Stay where we are, of course. It'd be balmy to go out there. Well, not necessarily. What? Well, no harm came to you, Mitch, in that ship on the moon. Well, I wasn't conscious of anything strange going on, but... But if all of us go into that ship, who knows what might happen with, without any of us being aware of it. I think we should find out more about this before we even set foot outside. I quite agree, a lot more. I'll talk to him. Hello, whoever you are. I can hear you. Then you must know how we feel. I know exactly how you feel. We know how we felt when we first saw you. But we have no intention of harming you. Can you prove that? Have we harmed you up to now? Oh, no. Apart from knocking us right out of our own time into heaven knows where, you haven't harmed us at all. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Then go ahead. Well, in the first place, have you anything to do with our being here now? Possibly. That's a great help. And how about that perishing music we keep hearing? Is that anything to do with you? Music? Yes, music. What is music? You, do, you don't know what music is? No. Wow. Music, it, it's a kind of uh, noise. It, it, sort of, it goes up and down. And uh, when you hear it, well, it makes you feel good. It, except your music, that makes you feel dreadful. A noise, you say? Yes, a peculiar kind of noise. Like this? Yes, that's it. That's it, exactly. That noise has been dogging us ever since we left Earth. And whenever we hear it, something always happens to us. But what is it? What did you do? All I did was turn on the power. The power that drives your ship? The power that drives everything. But what kind of power is it? What other power is there? Look, look, how, how do you generate it? What do you mean? Where do you get this power from? It exists everywhere. It covers the whole universe. All you have to do is use it. Like the heat from the sun. It's there, already, for anybody to use. Good grief, if, if only I had that secret. If only man had that secret, what couldn't he do? Man? What is man? What? Aren't you a man? 
I don't think so. Aren't you like us? Don't you look like us? No. We are very unlike you. Well, what are you like? You'll find out if you come into this ship. Oh, no, not yet. We need to know a few things more first. Go ahead. It was you on the moon, wasn't it? Well, one of our ships. Weren't you in it? No. Then where were you? Exactly where I am now. You mean those ships on the moon were some kind of reconnaissance craft? You might call them that. And did you send them specially to look for us? No, we didn't. We were very surprised to find you there. Not half so surprised as we were to find you. Then where are you from? From the other side of the universe. That's what Mitch told us, remember? Leave your own ship and come into ours. Look, will you give us a few minutes to talk this thing over? Certainly. Can we call you back? There is really no need. I can't go away. Then you don't mind if we switch off our radios. We have to conserve power. When you call, I will answer. Switch off your sets, all of you. Yeah, well, that's mine. Well, what do you make of that? We must go out there, do as he says. Now, wait a minute, Mitch. But why? He says we'll come to no harm, and none of us ever has, yet. Yeah, but it don't mean to say we won't, does it? Just think what we could learn from those, well, whatever they are. Why, even to have the secret of the motive power of their ships would be worth the risk. I think we should go, do everything he says. Well, what do you think, Doc? Well, in many ways, I agree with Mitch. But if they can help us, as they say they can, why can't they do it here and now? Why do we have to go into their ship? And if we do, where will they take us? That's what worries me. Well, it's something we could ask about. Well, go on, then. See what he says. I will, in good time. Let's see if we have anything else to ask first. I don't care what you ask. I want to go. If you three haven't the heart for it, then you can remain behind. If anybody goes, we all go. This is one time I think we should all stick together. But who knows what might happen to this ship if we go off and leave it? If anything catastrophic is going to happen, do you think one or two people remaining here will prevent it? No, I don't suppose so. Blimey, Jack, to hear you talk, you think you were as keen to go as Mitch? Well, perhaps I am. I want to get to the bottom of this. Find out who controls that ship, where he comes from, where he is now. And if he is anything to do with our being in this awful mess. And if he is? Then we have a good chance of persuading him to get us out of it again. Now nah, you're talking sense. Well, we might at that, I suppose. Well, we'll put it to the vote. Do we go or not? Yeah, we go. Doc? If you and Mitch agree, then I'll string along. Oh, there's no need to ask me. You've got your majority, ain't you? Right, then. Switch on that radio, Lemmy. Yes, Chip. Radio on. Hello? Hello? Yes? If we enter that thing, what will happen to us? It will take off, with you in it. Where to? Not very far. Well, why do we have to go there in your ship? It would take you a long time to walk. But why can't you come to us? Why do we have to come to you? It is safer. You are in great danger where you are. We want to protect you from it. What kind of danger? Look, why bother with all this? If we're going, let's go. Quiet, Mitch. We'll go when I'm good and ready. But this is just a waste of time. I said be quiet. Oh, all right. You have your natter, but do hurry up. Tell me one thing more. Yes? This danger you talk of, is it a threat to us personally or to our ship? I don't think your ship is likely to come to any harm. But you probably will. And very soon. Now, come on, Jet. He couldn't say much more, could he? It's better all around that we should go. And if it isn't? If you don't like where we shall take you, you can always return. Here, you mean? Or anywhere else you care to go. All right. Give us a few minutes to get ready and, and we'll come. And bring your radios with you. What for? So that we can talk to each other. They are our only means of communication at the moment. Very well. We'll bring them. I'll call you again when we're outside. Well, there's no point in just standing here looking at it. Let's go in. Lemmy, what are you doing? Oh, just making sure this thing's solid. That the old thing isn't just a dream. It's solid, all right. And there's the door open and the ladder extended. Oh, we'd better not all go in at once. I'll go first. Now, keep your radios on, and if it's OK, I'll tell you. All right. All right. All right. Take your time, Jet. Have a good look round before you actually go in. Radio on. Now climbing ladder. You can hear every sound. It's like the old ship. It's a great transmitter. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Jed. What can you see? Nothing. Nothing? Well, no more than Mitch did. Seems to be the same kind of ship exactly. With the octagonal panels round the wall? Yes. And the row of buttons above each one. Uh, certainly seems nothing to worry about here. I'm going inside. 
Now. Well, I'm in. Inside the cabin or whatever it is. And you don't feel peculiar or, or anything? No, quite normal. I think you might as well come up, all of you. OK, here we come. Well, what do you think? Nothing here that tells us anything. What can all those panels mean? Why are they all different colours? What are all them buttons? What happens if we press them? Uh, no, no, don't touch a thing. Now, leave this to me. Hello? Yes? Well, we're all inside. Now what do we do? Just stay where you are. And don't be afraid. Right. We're waiting. Oh, blimey. What's happening? It's the dome. It's closing. We're being shut in. Here, let me get out of here. No, wait. Don't let me. Hey. Well, whether we like it or not, the door's shut. We couldn't get out now, even if we wanted to. Well, what next? Well, why don't you call up the Wizard of Oz and ask him? He said we were going to take off. Sounds like we are, too. Let me stand back, stand back. Hey? The floor, near you, it's opening up. Oh, oh, blimey! Get back to the wall, all of you, flat against the wall. Oh, oh, it's a good thing you warned me, Mitch. I, I might have fallen into that thing. Did any of you notice any crack in the floor to show there was a panel just there? Not me, Jet. Well, if they all fit as well as that one, we're not likely to. Yeah, for all we know, the floor is full of sliding panels, all circular like that one. Well, if it is, none of them seems to be opening. Here, yeah. do you think old, um, whatever he is, he, he's down there? We well, said he wasn't in this ship, didn't he? Yeah, maybe he ain't, but a couple of his mates might be. Why do you stand there? Why don't you go down? Into that hole? Unless you do... The ship won't take off. Well, why can't it take off with us up here? It can, if you wish. But you'll find it most uncomfortable. Oh. Do you prefer to stay where you are? I prefer to get out altogether. That can be arranged, if you really want to. Yes, I do. And the quicker the better. Does that go for all of you? No, wait a minute. Yes? Would you let us out again, if we asked you? Of course. We don't wish you to do anything against your will. You entered this ship quite voluntarily. You can leave it again whenever you like. Then we'll stay. There, now, wait I a said we'll it. stay. Yes, Jim. What do you want us to do now? Go down into the lower cabin, and the hatch will close. And then? The ship will take off and bring you here. Where you are? Yes. All right, gentlemen. I'll lead the way. Yeah, but it's so dark down there it... Hey, hey, look. A light came on. And there's a ladder leading down. Well, go on, Jet. I don't think there's anything to be scared of. Not in here, anyway. You want to bet? All right. Here I go. After you, Mitch. It's OK, Doc. Hey, Lemmy, come on. Yeah, I'm coming. Uh, this ain't a thing I want to rush into. Go on, Lemmy. Nothing will harm you. Oh, Lemmy now, is it? Well, I'm going, ain't I? Then why do you hesitate? Your friends are already done. Come on, Lemmy, what are you doing? I'm coming. Go on, then. Here, how do you know what I'm doing? Can you see me? Of course. But how? You say you're not even here. How do you look around your ship without going outside? Well, through the tele... Oh, all right, you win. Jet, here I'll come. Well, come on, then. What's this, the bargain basement? Here! That panel's closing again! Yeah, he said it would. Wow, this is really something, isn't it? Where does the light come from? Eh? Well, where does it? There, there are no lamps of any kind that I can see. It's like the walls are glowing, a sort of super-diffused lighting. It's those octagonal panels again. It seems to come from there. And, and what's this? Well, some kind of control table, I'd say. And what else can it be? You think that all those buttons in the upper cabin would be controls too, then? Well, why not? Well, I'd say they were more of a decoration. Now, look, the way this ship's designed, I doubt if there's a single thing in it that doesn't serve a practical purpose. This is a control panel of some kind, I'd swear it. But why have a control panel in a ship that's remote controlled? Maybe it isn't all the time. Our own ship was remote controlled for the takeoff from Earth, but we've handled it ourselves ever since. But if this ship is ever manually operated, wouldn't there be seats or something for the crew to sit on? Yeah, you would have thought so. Well, this cabin's virtually empty. No provision for the comfort of a crew anywhere. All seats and such like could be folded back into the walls and, and released only when needed. Maybe the buttons on this panel operate some of those very things. No, no Mitch, don't touch them. <laughs> you don't think I'm crazy, do you? Yeah, now, if this is a remote-controlled ship... Well? Would them others be crew carriers? Which others? Well, the ones that came and gave us the once-over yesterday, the, 
the bell-shaped ones. Well, they might at that, Lemmy. They were certainly different from this, and much bigger, too. Hey, what's this? What? Uh, this thing. A sphere, about a foot in diameter. What's it made of? Some kind of glass or highly polished plastic or something. I wonder what's inside it. And what it's for. Funny place for it to be, too. Right in the center of the cabin. Why a sphere? Well, I don't think that's very surprising, really. Well, how do you mean? Well, the whole ship seems to be built to a spherical or circular pattern. The thing itself is round, like a donut. The roof is a dome. The hatch is circular. And but for the flat floor, this cabin is spherical. And even the control panel, if it is a control panel, is disc-shaped. Everything is curved. How about those octagonal panels in the walls, Jeff? Yeah, they intrigue me more than anything. I bet the whole secret of how this ship works and the power it uses lies behind there. Oh, the whole ship is certainly of a most unusual design. So simple. I'll bet it works in the same way, if we only knew how. Well, why don't we try to find out? We've got the chance. Let's take a good look round, examine everything in sight, see if we can find the slightest clue as to how this thing might function. Yeah, right, yeah, good so idea. Well, let's get started. And don't miss a thing. Well, that didn't take long, did it? How could it? There's hardly anything to see. It's the same wherever you look. Well, it makes it difficult to keep any sense of direction, doesn't it? One walk round this cabin and you don't know whether you're coming or going. Yeah, like when you wake suddenly in the night and look for the window, only to find it in the wrong wall. Yeah, except that here yeah, there aren't any windows. Well, there aren't any in our ship either. But at least we got an air conditioner. Well, there must be something of the sort here. Then where is it? Well, there must be some kind of air supply, Lemmy, else how could we breathe? That's what's worrying me. I think we're just using the air that came in when the door opened. But as soon as that's gone, we've had it. Good and proper. No, no, that can't be. The air seems quite fresh. It certainly hasn't got any hotter. At least I haven't noticed it. Me neither. But there must be some kind of supply coming from somewhere. Well, if there is, it would be a kind that the fellows who built this ship could breathe, wouldn't it? Of course, Lemmy. And how do we know that that, uh, whatever it is, won't poison us? No, I don't think they can be all that different from us, Lemmy. Or how could they exist on the Earth at all? Look, we haven't seen anybody yet. All we've done is hear a voice. He may not even be on the Earth. Might be on Mars or Venus or somewhere. Well, I doubt if he's that far away. Yes, but Lemmy has a point there. They may be very different from us, exist in quite a different way. Well, he said he was unlike us, didn't he? Well, it is possible, of course. Oh, I think it's more than just possible. Look at this place. But for that oversized football and a control panel, this cabin is completely empty. No seats, no couches, no food, no water, no nothing. Here. Yeah. Perhaps they don't exist physically at all. Then how come they need physical ships? Why build them in the first place? Well, just because they build them don't mean they've got to fly in them any more than a meteorologist flies in a weather balloon. But supposing they do fly in them, that they have some kind of physical shape, they may be much tougher than us. Perhaps high acceleration doesn't affect them at all. Maybe that's why they can fly so fast, maneuver so easily. If they start throwing this thing around the way they do their other ships, they'll probably kill us all. Yeah, but do they realize that? Do they know exactly how much the human body can stand? Look, Jet, I think we'd better try and contact them. Make sure they do realize just what kind of creatures we are. Yeah, tell them, uh, take it easy. Tell them we're weak, very weak. Yeah. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? Try him again, Jet. Hello? Hello, crew of Luna calling, can you hear me? Hello? The radio seems to be dead, I can't hear a thing. Well, I can. Eh? Yes, I can, that music. Not quite the same as before, but I can hear it. Yes, yeah, so can I. And there's some kind of pressure building up. Can't you feel it? Yeah. Yeah. We must be taking off. We are taking off. This ship's on the move in a vertical climb. Hello. Hello. Blimey, I mean, we'd be squashed flat. I know it. Hello. Hello. Pressure's getting stronger. Hey, look, we better lie down, all of us. What, on the floor? Yeah, where else? With no shock absorbers to protect us or anything? Yeah, lie down, Lemmy. Oh. All of you, lie flat. Oh, no. Pressure seems to be less now. Yes, we must have stopped climbing. Yeah, but we haven't stopped moving. We've just straightened out, that's all. And I feel fine. Oh, we panicked over nothing. Well, do we get up now or just lie here? Get up, all of you. Uh, right. If only we could see where we were going. Oh, it's uncanny. 
hurtling through the air like this and we don't even know which way up we are. I'll call him again. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? No go? <sighs> Not a peep. You, you better all listen. Maybe my battery's given out or something. Well, in that case, there's no point in you calling him because he won't be hearing you anyway. Look, I'll try. Maybe I'll have better luck. Hello? Hello? Come in, please. Hello? Hello? No, uh, not a sound. How about you, Lemmy? No, my set's as dead as a door now. Yeah, so's mine. It can't just be the batteries then, can it? They wouldn't all run down at the same time. Well, no, something's put them out of action. It must be because we're in this cabin. Why? Well, they were working all right before we came down here, weren't they? Yeah, but I don't think that can be the reason. Why not? Well, this has happened to us before. On the moon and out in space. The electrical equipment, the radio especially, is packed in time and again. And always when we've heard that music. Here. Didn't that Mr. Mystery say that music happens when he turns on the power that drives his ship? Yes, of course. Whatever force that is, it must set up a powerful magnetic field. One strong enough to neutralise all the equipment in our ship. The radio in particular. You mean that whenever the radio cut, it was because one of those ships was around, flying near us? Well, it's as likely an explanation as any. And the more ships there are, and the closer they come, the, the stronger the effect. Yes, that would account for the fact that nothing worked before taking off from the moon. Ships like this must have been all around us. What else could it have been? I'll bet the minute that music stops, the radios will work again. I don't know about that, but something's happening here. Hey, This darn fishbowl, it's, it's beginning to glow. And what's the... Hey, there's something appearing on it. Yeah, it, it's a model. A model? What do you mean? It's like those things you see in glass cases in the Geological Museum. A relief map. Yeah, that's it. A relief map such as I've never seen before, with every tiny detail. But what's it a map of? Country not unlike that we just left. There's the river. Yes. And the cultivated fields along its banks. And the forest, at least a, a part of it. Here. Here, do, do I look all right? Why shouldn't you? I don't look dizzy or anything. <laughs> not in the sense you mean. Why? Well, if it... If it wasn't, I know it's impossible. I'll, I'll say that map, or model, or whatever it is, is moving. What? Eh? Yes, it is. At first, I thought it must be my imagination. Look, you see that clump of trees? Uh -huh. Well, they weren't there a moment ago. Well, where did they come from? Well, where'd they go to? The trees on this side are disappearing. Yes. It's like they're going right through the glass, but nothing comes out. Good heavens, I know what that is. A three-dimensional televiewer. Eh? Hey? That's not a map at all. It's a reproduction of the country we're flying over. But, That's why it's moving. But it looks so solid, Jeff. It gives that illusion, certainly. But if we broke open the case, I doubt very much if there'd be anything to touch. Wow. What would the TV boys back home give for this? Yeah, but why have it in a glass bowl? Why not on a screen? Does it matter? This method is probably the best there is for a three-dimensional televiewer. Maybe this is how all three-dimensional receivers should be made. Maybe every telecinema should be constructed this way. What, you mean have the audience sit round the screen instead of in front of it? Well, why not? Could you have anything better than this? It's as though there were an observing hatch in the floor. It's so real. Well, I don't know what kind of people they are that built this ship, but they're way ahead of our time, streets ahead. Blimey, you're right, too. You couldn't be right. What do you mean? Well, look, see? Just coming into view. Streets, a, a city or town or something, down there by the river. Oh, yeah. Right. Is that where the voice is? Is that where we're going? How high do you think we are, Jet? Always supposing that this picture is a true representation of what lies below us. Well, I don't know how much this gadget reduces things, but I'd say about five miles. And it must be a fairly big town. There's still a lot of it coming into the picture. And the houses seem to be built on a spherical principle, too. Yeah, there must be Eskimos. Either that or they're not houses at all. What else could they be? Spaceships, just like those bell-shaped ones that flew over us. Could be. It's not easy to tell from this height. Hey, we're almost directly overhead now. It looks as though we're going to pass them by. Perhaps we're not stopping here at all. Hey, hey look, down there, see? To one side of the town, or whatever it is, more spheres, but much smaller. Yeah, from up here, they look just like toadstools. They must be the ships. That must be a landing or a parking field. Oh, the larger spheres must be houses. Or larger ships. Oh, they could be at that. Or well, whatever they are, it doesn't look as though we're going to land there. We're leaving them behind rapidly. Well, then where are we going? Well, how should I know? I'm not the guide on this trip, Lemmy. Well, we might keep going for days, weeks, maybe. What do we do? A food and drink? Oh, if we'd had any sense, we'd have brought some with us. How were we to know we'd need it? That voice, whatever he was, he said he wasn't taking us very far. And in any case, he was taking us away from a danger of some kind. If that's true, 
Is it likely that he'd keep us penned up in here long enough for us to starve to death? Well, there's nothing we can do about it now. We can't even call him up, not with the radios out of action. Then what do we do? Wait and hope. At least with this televiewer contraption, we've got something to look at. We can see the kind of country we're travelling over. That's better than travelling in the dark. Falling, we're going down. Well, did it have to be in such a hurry about it? A sudden drop turned my stomach right over. If we continue to fall at this rate, we'll hit the ground with a heck of a crash. And they've got no respect for their own property. Oh, hold on. What, too? The walls are as smooth as glass. The base of the televiewer. Put your arms round it and bend your knees. Oh, don't have to. There can't be more than a few thousand feet to go. Oh, oh, blimey. They slowed up kind of sudden, didn't oh, they? Oh, I'll have no stomach left at all in a minute. We're going to make a gentle landing anyway. We've made it. We're down. This must be where we change. Change is right. But for what? You have been listening to episode nine of Journey into Space with Andrew Foles as Jet Morgan, Alfie Bass as Lemmy, Guy Kingsley Pointer as Doc, and David Williams as Mitch. And with Derek Guyler. The orchestra was conducted by Van Phillips, who also composed the music. Journey into Space was written and produced for the BBC by Charles Chilton.